Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in back with another video a day till this channel hits 100K. This is like video 60 something, I don't even know anymore. But I decided to do another behind the scenes video here showing you guys not just how I edit or you know my office or studio, but actually getting a little bit more on the tech side. What do I have here in my home IT setup? This is something that's actually pretty important to me uh, as somebody who's been working in this YouTube space for quite a long time, trying to manage very large files, things like that. Uh, but also I worked from home for a long time. And one thing people don't talk about when you work from home is that when you work from home, you're also kind of your own IT guy and there's a whole lot that goes into it. Companies do not reimburse nearly enough or provide nearly enough support for that component. That includes internet connection and all that kind of stuff as well. So let me show you guys what I have here. I converted this rather tiny coat closet, honestly it didn't really serve much of a purpose as a coat closet, into an entire IT server room, so to speak. So uh, open this up here. This is just a Nave Point rack that I got off Amazon. I'll link all this stuff down below, of course. I got it rigged up with lights. So there is all of the stuff that I have set up, including like the printer down below, some extra stuff kind of hanging out down at the bottom. I've got my Eero Wi-Fi set up here alongside with Simply Safe, just sitting up top. So again, some other stuff. I have a projector that we watch TV or movies without in the backyard, some additional networking stuff. And then I also vented, this is just a pass-through vent that actually goes over to my laundry room. And these two fans back here are just blowing air out, exhausting into the laundry room just to get it out of this server rack area, trying to keep it as cool as I possibly can. And the way that I monitor all these temperatures is I have this sensor push hub and sensor push is just a whole bunch of sensors that I actually have all over my house. I have them in my garage, fridge, and freezer, monitoring those temperatures in case it gets left opened. Um, also home fridge, freezer, garage, all that kind of stuff. So we'll just start kind of top to bottom here. We have our Philips Hue hub up top, our Eris surfboard modem. If you are somebody who is renting your modem from your cable company, stop doing it. You're wasting money. They charge like a stupid amount of money to lease it. You don't have a whole lot of control over it. I always run my own individual modem and router. Over time, you save quite a bit of money by having your own modem. And then working our way down uh, a Netgear switch, we've got just a pile PDBC70, just a, a light switch panel uh, or just a switch panel. Why I have this set up like this is because, well, this is actually really easy. Cox internet is the worst and it's constantly going out. So now my wife and my eight year old both know if we need to fix the internet, they can just come over here, modem router, shut those down, wait for 30 seconds or so, and then fire them back up. And my wife and daughter now both know what the indicator lights mean on those systems. Now, I also 3D printed up a little blocker here so that nobody's accidentally just hard turning off the NAS because that would not be ideal. I've actually done it a couple times on accident, which is why I put this little blocker on that switch. And just everything's got its own little power source. This here is a thousand watt cyber power UPS. Goal of this is just to run our internet for power outages. And also it triggers the Synology, which we'll talk about in a second, to go into a safe shutdown as well so that the NAS is not having any sort of data corruption. Then we get to the crown jewel, Synology. This is the RS1221 Plus. Now that whole setup is amazing for a home office rack mounted NAS because the reason is most of those NASs are actually really, really deep, but this one is shallow and fits in that rack okay. Pay no mind to all of my wire mess back there. I need to get this all kind of tore apart and reroute some of these cables, clean it up, tidy it up a little bit more, but this is basically the culmination of a lot of add something, remove something, and then the wires get messed up because of that. And then uh, I just added this rack path sliding drawer. It's a good place to have just extra cables and networking stuff that um, I have in there. 
And then down here, we've got the Lorex uh, home security system. Now Lorex, I love my Lorex camera system. I take my home security super serious. It doesn't stop at cameras. I'll just leave it at that. I've had, unfortunately, because of the social media thing, at one point, somebody actually had stopped and taken a selfie in front of my house, which the postman actually had caught and I caught that on camera, it was really weird. So stuff like that, um, that incident alone is what led me to upgrade my camera system because I had realized when I was running the Nest cameras, the quality is just garbage. Not only is the quality garbage, but it's also just taking up a ton of bandwidth if you're running a bunch of those cameras because they're all Wi-Fi enabled. So with the Lorex camera system, yes, you need to run ethernet cables to all of those locations that you wanna put cameras, but it's just, maybe a couple hours a, a crawling around up in the attic for many, many, many years of way better footage that is backed up on a hard drive and you can access remotely also. So Lorex, huge fan, ditch all of those Wi-Fi cameras. They are the easiest, but not the best solution. I say that lightly. If you're talking about putting a cam one or two cameras up at your house, those Wi-Fi ones could be okay, but Lorex so much better. And I have had zero problems with these Lorex cameras. My father has Lorex, he's used them for years, and he's had some issues where he's had to replace the uh, network storage box itself several times. But his is also in his basement in New York, and it's, I don't wanna say super damp, but it's, it's humid, and I've always wondered if that was causing him issues with those units. But my cameras, love them, they are the best. I also had this little monitor, I used to use this for like a separate monitor for the cameras when I was recording YouTube videos. So I had super cheap actually, but it's nice when this whole thing is off and closed up, open this closet up and see who's there just by looking at that monitor, which is actually really nice. My only real and significant gripe with Lorex is the fact that they have not updated their Apple TV app in like ages and it just does not work. So that is uh, kind of a quick down and dirty uh, tour of my network solution here for uh, the channel and my home uh, setup. But a lot of people in the YouTube space I've heard say like, why would you bother saving all your footage? Like, are you ever gonna go back to it? The answer is I go back to my footage all of the time. And I started thinking about it like, these big YouTube channels that have people that film for them, people who edit for them, people, all these like people, I don't have any of that. So. Anytime I capture anything on video, to me, having the ability to access that again for B-roll quickly is just so much easier for me. Storage-wise, I am crushing. I've got a lot here. So this is the Synology web app. And I know there's some people that like really kind of crap on Synology, but right now I've got 43 terabytes of video footage and 12.8 terabytes free. So I have quite a bit here. I also have a duplicate file problem going on because uh, what I'll do is I'll source B-roll and then all of that footage gets saved into a project and I'll just save that whole project file. So I probably have maybe around like two terabytes of duplicate footage. There's a sort of easy-ish way to go through the whole Synology thing and figure out where it is and clean it up, which I'll do um, soon. Actually, it's on my agenda of back-end YouTube stuff that you guys don't get to see that takes many hours is like some of the network management stuff. So I don't know, just thought I would share some of this and, and show you guys what it is I have. I know it's probably overkill for your average home setup, but there's plenty of people out there who would like a Synology for uh, their own media files. And, um, you know, I just think that the whole setup that I have is absolutely killer. Now, the other thing I didn't mention here is I also have a 10 gigabit uh, connection running to my Mac Studio because I do have the Synology actually has a 10 gigabit uh, connection to the rear of it. So I'm actually transferring files back and forth to the Synology over 10 gigabit connection. The reason why I went with the Eero setup is because the Eero has a 10 gigabit ethernet connection. So while I don't have 10 gigabit speeds, I do have it set up where the Eero is 10 gigabit and the Synology, I also upgraded to the 10 gigabit connection. So with that, I am able to back up, move, transfer massively large video files in incredibly fast time. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Thought it might be an interesting video to pull back the curtain on my 
IT setup. So with that said, thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I will see you guys next time.